Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. Peter! Hey. Peter is here! I don't know how this has never happened before now, but Peter has finally joined us on the couch here. I'm glad you guys have finally stooped to this level. It's, <laughs> it's nice to uh, have, have me met at the bottom. Yeah, trust me, we had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be looking at some Godzilla effects from all these different movies back in the day. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good for me. Also, we had a really cool opportunity to interview the director of the newest Godzilla movie, Godzilla Minus One. But did you bring some clips for us today? I did bring some clips. You know, Godzilla has a, quite a variety of quality. I got some great Godzilla clips to show you guys, and I got some silly bad ones to show you guys, and I'm very oh, excited. Yeah. Ooh, some silly clips, huh? Silly clips, dog. Silly Godzilla clippies. So guys, I think we should start off strong with maybe the best Godzilla effects I've ever seen. You really? guys are gonna love this. Is that, What wait, is going on here? Wait, hold okay. up, hold up. Is Ultraman that Ultraman? And, like Mothra? Versus giant cricket? Yeah, pretty much. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> He's so goofy and friendly looking. I love the way he moves. <laughs> He's like a baby Godzilla. <laughs> He's got so much personality in his eyes. Also, Ultraman and the bug are getting back up for round two, I guess. Yeah, and the bug is just like cool with it now. <laughs> <laughs> I love the velocity at which he's trapped. He's like up and then <laughs> <laughs> just tail sliding. <laughs> So, um, as VFX artists, how do, how do you guys think they did? <laughs> yeah. the... Obviously, it's like dudes in suits, but it's kind of well done. I mean, I, I don't see any wires. I don't That's see any good. wires. Like, the background looks like it's a proper scale. Like, those are trees we're seeing, even though they're miniature. This is pretty great. I like it. The visual effects, I give a A+. Plus. Where is this energy today? CGI, boring. So for the 1984 Godzilla movie, and they were like, okay, we're building a 16 foot tall Godzilla robot. And it was really cool, it mostly worked, but what's tragic is, I guess it didn't look very good because they removed almost all of the shots with this from the American release. Oh no. And there are only a couple shots because the eyes malfunctioned and oh, they would no. kind of look in different directions. Oh no. <laughs> so it just looked really silly. There it is. <laughs> Wait, let me see it again. <laughs> just, oh, is that? <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, we can't put this in the I'm movie. I'm Godzilla. <laughs> I love the practical explosives on this kind of stuff. Just slow motion, like the smoke curling around the costumes. I guess one of the benefits of building a giant animatronic is that your like smoke and fire scales better. Yeah, totally. <laughs> And then this is probably the rubber suit. I think that's what they used for the majority of this movie still. I think my problem with this that we're seeing right now is that it looks like a miniature set. Yeah. You know, like the little spaceship thing definitely looks like it's about this big. Yeah. Although here they did a good job combining the miniature plate with all of the crowd there. In 1984, that's a full on comp shot that they were having to do. Yeah, they did a good job matching the colors and like the feel of the lighting. And all. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. So there's a new Godzilla coming out. Godzilla, minus one. Peter, have you seen the trailer for the new movie yet? Yes, I have. I watched it yesterday. It looks oh, great. Dang. It looks really exciting. I wish I hadn't, but uh, I'll, You're I'll react to say as no. if I can lie. <laughs> Here, ask me again. Ask me again. Peter, have you seen the trailer for the new Godzilla yet? I no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> This looks very good. That looks like real like footage of an aircraft flying over this battleship. And then of course you got Godzilla underneath the water, but you can get away with like, you know, doing some like transparency things and making it look like it's under the water. At the end of the day, it's like, this is probably just a full CG shot. I bet it's full CG. The challenge with doing full CG shots like this is that you have all the interaction around the boat and the ocean surface. Oftentimes you just get away with that being footage of the ocean or a separate thing, but trying to get them to react, like you see on the edges of the wake, you have now the ripples going into the ocean, kind of makes you have to do the whole thing now as like one big sim, and then it just yeah. gets really heavy. So we just looked at space battleship Yamato. Dude, that's a freaking <laughs> space titanic. <laughs> And coincidentally, the same director is the director of Godzilla Minus One, 
And they reached out to us after having seen our Shin Godzilla clip to ask if we'd like to talk to him about the movie. Yeah, so the biggest challenge was tackling all those massive bodies of water. Just the water on its own was 500 terabytes. We're trying to set up all the, the computing power that's possible, but we're running them down. So we actually had to just, it was this cat and mouse chase of, you know, locking down VFX, but we needed more, more machines, more power, more everything. I do really like the design of this Godzilla. We've seen so many different permutations. You know, back in the day, he was kind of just like a tall lizard. Even like the more modern interpretations of Godzilla, he's still kind of lizard-like, whereas this guy looks like a monster. Even Shin Godzilla, which we looked at recently, was kind of like that towering, just, I'm a walking statue, but I'm very sharp and prickly, whereas this guy has that same prickly nature while still feeling like, oh, I'm a monster that can move. I feel like the best way to describe it would be to say craggly. <laughs> craggly. So what was your biggest inspiration for the design of the new Godzilla? Yeah, so my intention with my Godzilla was for it to be scary and cool. You know, I was able to just really delve into the character design using ZBrush. And of course, you know, and then it goes to the downstream process and someone much better than me finishes it. But at least I'm able to send off exactly the kind of Godzilla I was looking for. I point out I was director and the screenwriter and the VFX supervisor. So it was really great to just go from script all the way to post-production, the entire process. Because when I'm writing the script, I could also keep in mind how much time something would take and how many crew we would need. So I can keep that in mind as I'm writing it. But once we got into the VFX portion of post, then I'm actually reviewing all the VFX as they're coming out. So I think compared to a, a different production, all those VFX checks were able to happen more, much, much more frequently. I do feel like it's the way you need to do it for a movie like this. Like to have your director be the visual effects supervisor on a Godzilla movie is important because it's like the whole thing is effects. Not to pick on Marvel necessarily, there's obviously some great Marvel stuff, but there's also a lot of Marvel stuff where it's like an actor's director. And then the fight scene happens and it's like, that was made by a different team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so for example, you know, obviously, you know, I have my crews, you know, we divvy up the different scenes, but then over time, you know, deadline lines start getting missed and things like that. And we fall behind, so I end up by my own computer and doing it myself. Spoken like a true VFX artist. <laughs> <laughs> So big shout out to Godzilla Minus One and the team for sponsoring this video, letting us talk to the director. It's out in theaters now. There's a link in the description below if you want to go check it out and find a theater near you that's playing it. And we even have a little exclusive clip only for this channel. Here it is. So I didn't particularly grow up with the Japanese Godzilla movies, even though they're very inherently Japanese. But I did see the Godzilla that came out in 1998 when I was a kid, and I loved this movie. And looking back on it so many years later, I'm really impressed by the decision making be behind the visual effects. The visual effects in this movie are insane. How do you think they did that? With the water going up like that, that looks practical. I can tell you. Yeah. So for this sequence, they literally just had a smaller version of the pier that they put in the water and had a scale Godzilla model. They just shot through it really fast. And so that's all miniature right there. Wow. And the guy is comped in. Ah, okay, sure. Wow. God, this is so well done. That is a flawless shot. Like you watch it, it's like it doesn't look like VFX. It just looks like a real shot of this happening. Yeah, not at all. Like the reflection of him in the you know the wetness of the dog. Yeah. Also, notice how they have the chain link fence in front of all of it to really make it look like it's all combined there. That's really clever. Yeah. <laughs> Now this is the shot that I remember most from the movie. It's such a big moment between the joking of like trying to get the cassette tape in it and me like, ah. Oh. 
<laughs> and then almost getting squished by a footstep. This is like in every trailer shot. I really miss the vibe of early 2000s movies where CG was good enough where they could mix it with super expensive practical yes. effects. What's really interesting about this is that if you look at just Godzilla and the rendering and shading on it, it looks dated. It does. And yet the implementation of it with all of the footage holds up. Having the, all the cars actually move, having the camera shake just right, having the actual footprint of Godzilla like left behind as it moves away, it makes for an iconic moment. Even all the water around his feet that splash up at the crater. The thing that makes the CGI look dated to me, you don't have fine, intricate ambient occlusion. You only have like generalized shadows. So even though Godzilla has this bumpy, crazy texture on its skin, you don't have the detail to be able to go in with the lighting and render the shadows that should be in those wrinkles and yeah. crevices and all that kind of stuff. Which it looks like there's maybe some of that going on with the painted texture. You know, they put some ambient occlusion like baked into the texture, but mm -hmm. it's funny how a lot of modern CGI that technically looks really good, we say looks bad and something like this where the CGI itself isn't rendered using modern technology technique so it looks a little dated but it's still it has so much attention to detail that we like it I think they also went to the Jurassic Park School of Lighting here. Yeah, and it's raining, just like in Jurassic Park. How much you want to bet they literally like tried to take every lesson from Jurassic Park and was like, all right, we're going to take all that and apply it here. Yep, probably. 100%. That looks pretty dang good. That does not look as dated as those first few shots did. I could be wrong, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they actually made a physical maquette and like used pictures and stuff like that for textures uh, and you know, basing probably, a lot of this on yeah. physical modeling. Oh, this is insane. That's an The compositing here is insane. Like, we're talking about CGI, but like from a compositing point of view, this is insane compositing. Even now, this is insane compositing. To have a shot that looks like this with this kind of compositing, like this window shot. Matching all of the lighting, like they got the glow from that, you know, sign behind it casting onto the back edge of Godzilla, all the street wow. lights and everything. Like that one shot there, I think is probably the best looking shot in the whole movie. Like this holds up so dang well. Godzilla! Godzilla 2000. Godzilla 2000, super cool. It came out right after the American Godzilla that came out, but it's a classic Japanese Godzilla. Model work, suits. This is like the last of its kind. This is the pinnacle. This is the end of the classic Godzilla techniques wow. here. And it's pretty crazy. Dang, that looks good. So for this shot, do you think that's forced perspective or do you think that's a comp? Oh, it's definitely, oh, it's definitely a, comp. a comp. Yeah, it's a dude in a water tank and they're just masking it out. Looks perfect. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is that is pretty good, but you can see the scale of the water ripples there. Yeah. And they're, but they did a really good job feathering that out to match it into the ocean. They got the color of the water right too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wait, <laughs> whoa, wait, wait. Whoa, is that a motion control shot? Wait! Yeah. Or just, no, that's comped. It's comped, it's definitely comped somehow. And the camera is moving. You know what? I think it might be Godzilla on a treadmill walking towards camera. Yeah. And they just scaled him down. Yeah, you can see they're doing their dangdest to keep those feet on the ground. And it's hand tracked for sure. <laughs> there was no 3D tracking when they made this. I love the explosives Whoa. in the costume. It wow. looks so good. That costume is on fire. <laughs> Yeah. God, the water stuff looks pretty dang good. Like, yeah. this shot looks great. Whoa! Whoa. Flail your arms and scream if you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire, I'm drowning. I can't breathe. <laughs> 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 I'm on fire, and I'm in three feet of water in a rubber suit, and I can't move, help me. Oh, yeah. Wow. Whoa. I love it. See, this stuff's really cool. I like watching miniatures like this get blown up. Filmmakers yeah. don't need to hide that it's a miniature. Like, I like that it's a miniature. <laughs> like, that's why I'm here. It's like making a Toy Story movie and being like, I hope nobody notices it's CGI. <laughs> it's like, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like watching miniatures blow up. I also still have no idea what the ropes are. <laughs> oh my god, this is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> It's also interesting to note how model buildings fall over completely differently when people aren't doing it in CGI. Mm -hmm. Like when you can't direct it to fracture into all these little pieces and it has to like fall over in chunks. Oh, oh. my goodness! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that building had a nuclear bomb in it. <laughs> <laughs> 
these comp shots are really well done. It's like, it just shows how far you can go with like basic CGI as long as you film all your stuff and put it together. Like real plates. All right, well, we looked at a ton of Godzilla clips. If there are any other themes you have ideas for that we should take a look at, leave them in the comment section below. Let us know, maybe we'll take a look. Peter, what'd you think? You know what, it's an honor to be on this couch. I feel like I'm fulfilling a, a, some sort of destiny here and uh, glad it's with you too. And uh, this was a lot of fun, thanks for having me. Yeah, it'd be, I mean, I'd love to have you on the couch again. Okay, next week, all right, yeah. I'll be here next week. I mean, I will be here next week. <laughs> <laughs> I already got it scheduled, so see you then. <laughs> right. Next on Animators React with Aaron Blaze. Stay tuned, subscribe for that. Wow, you must have done this before. Yeah.